you're enjoying Racing World, it's brought to you by Perspective Group. It's your global motorsport podcast show brought to you in conjunction with Race Control Magazine. Oh yes, that's right, you can see the smile on my face. It's nearly the month of May and May means Indy. They're 106 running of the great race. And for the past two days, we've had the open test at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway as a countdown to the running of that race. What does it mean? It means a lot. All 32 cars that are currently entered for the race took part in the open test, so it was a fantastic couple of days. Lots of issues, lots of dramas. We're gonna quickly round them off, talk to a few people, and uh, just sum up how this test went. And a big shout out to everyone at Velocity News New Zealand. Big shout out to Mark and Zane for having us on board for the month of May, as Velocity News will be taking everything from Racing World during the month of May, so check it out on Velocity, one of the best websites in the country for motorsport news, and they do a great job there. So that's velocity.co.nz. You all have a great read on everything motorsport there. And for us, of course, our focus is firmly Indy, and of course, Formula One as well, because it's running a Grand Prix this week, so we'll talk about that next week. But to Indy in the open test, big thing, two days, weather affected, both days, very cold, that plays a part in Indy. The second day, the first, basically most of the morning was called off because of uh, wet weather, and then of course on the first day, the afternoon was cut short because of the issues with the track. So let's just summarise what happened starting with day one. First up, the entry list. So what do we know? We know that Junkos and Ryan hunter Ray won't be teaming up as a driver team combination, that's for sure. Ryan hunter Ray saying just not enough time, not enough crew, all the pieces of the puzzle not quite together. But he'll be there helping Callum Eilod out for the entire month, so that's a great person to have on your timing stands, that's for sure. So that rules out that equation. The Cusick Motorsport entry, that's still floating around. We know that. Uh, the Beth Perena Motorsport thing, we know that too. That's not happening. She'll do some races with her team and Simona de Silvestre later in the year, but not for now. So where's it leave us? Cusick's probably the best option of all with Stefan Wilson. Will it come into play? Will they lease the Hollinger Junkos car? That's about their only option. The other thing that came out of Indianapolis today, and it was reported on Racer Magazine as well, was the fact that the field will be capped at 33. Mark Miles stating that once that 33rd entry comes in, they will close the entry list. So there will be no 34th, which indirectly means there will be no bump day. So there's a tradition long held at Indy that will disappear this year. And I'm kind of sad about that. Lots of other traditions disappearing. One that the environmentalists got behind is the fact that there will be no flying of the 500 balloons at race start. It's deemed to be environmentally unfriendly. Yes, I'm having a rant here. Don't agree with it. It's part of the spectacle. But anyway, that's the way it's going to be. The other big thing coming out of India, of course, is the fact that in 2022, if Scott Dixon was to lead more than 50 laps in the race, it will make him the all-time lap leader at Indianapolis, bar none. Currently, he sits third on the table behind Al Unser on 644 laps, uh, then Brian De Palma on 612, and then Dixie's there at 5.63. The nearest competition to him drops down as far as 18th, and that's Elio Castroneves on 305. So Dixon could create history by leading 50 laps at the Speedway this year during the 106 running of the great race. And so to day one, well, apart from the cold conditions, everyone wrapped up in their beanies and jackets and everything else, very uncharacteristic for April. It needs to be getting warmer soon, that's for sure. It was right on the threshold in terms of temperatures for Firestone. But the big thing that stood out for the day, of course, was the sealant or the lack of grip on the pit apron exiting the pits and coming onto the back straight. Many, many issues. Rossi spun there early on. It was put down to the fact that the weather was or the temperature was cold at that stage and no one thought too much of it. Then Alio had his go. Then Willpower had one. Uh, which resulted in Herter and Ericsson being involved as well. And then eventually the pin was pulled for the day. Doug Boys revealed this morning on the second day that Firestone and everyone had been looking at that area up until 1 a.m. in the morning, trying to at least get it to rubber up by running tractor tires around it, all sorts of things, adding some sealant to it. Uh, there was a 25% less grip area there than on the rest of the track. Now that will be resolved, so there's no alarm bells. The only casualty really became the shank racing car of Elio Castro Nevis. It is their 500 car. It is also the winning car from last year, and it returned to the Ohio base. So unfortunately, Elio didn't take part in day two, and that is a big shame, and it's a big setback for the team. That's a whole day of track 
test time lost, whole day of uh, being there with Simon Paginot in the second car lost, and more importantly, all that work gone into preparing that 500 car now comes into a rebuild phase. Can they bounce back? Of course they can. They've got time on their side, but it's just something that you don't really want. The other interesting quote that came out of all of that uh, affair yesterday was Will Power when he spun, basically saying that he'd never been as scared as it in his life and felt that he was going to get collected. But listening to him on IMS radio, I've never heard him sound quite like that. And he was, no, I, th I think, visibly quite shaken by it. So it was a good decision by IMS to pull the pin. Uh, it's light still now in India to quite late. So they got onto the track repair. And as I said, they will get it right. So looking at day one, it was Dixon that topped the timesheets. This was a solid performance from Scott and the entire Ganassi outfit, all five cars that they had there. And I had the chance to catch up with Scott when the session had ended. We're going to hit David Not Turner so uh, from the racing world in New Zealand for Scott Dixon. Thanks very much, Kate. Um, Scotty, just a quick question for you. With Ganassi going up to five cars for the 500, just what impact does that have for you particularly and then having TK back in the squad as well? Uh, you know, I think it's it's great. You know, obviously, it's it's a great group of people. Uh, it's tough. I imagine just on the team side, you know, we we're everybody's struggling right now to find people, right? You know, find mechanics, find engineers, find uh, anybody right now. So um, it makes it kind of thin. I think we went through a pretty tough growing stage with adding an additional IMSA car and then the Extreme E and all that stuff going on, and then the fourth car on the on the IndyCar side and a fifth here. So it. Uh, you know, the way the season is laid out, I think we're not too bad just because the IMSA program will, will take, you know, most of that grunt. Um, and there's, you know, a lot of depth to the team. So, you know, hopefully uh, hopefully not too many issues. But as far as, you know, everybody working together, it's it's, it's a great group and, and uh, it's been, been a lot of fun already. And then I guess when it comes to practice, you'll be able to practice as a group of five, a bit like Andretti Autosport does as well. That would be the goal. Uh, it doesn't always work out that way. I think, you know, it, it depends on people's, you know, schedules. But, yeah, when, when you've got more, it's, it's much easier to do that, even to join, you know, some of the other groups and, and make a bigger pack. Um, you know, it gives you a little more flexibility. So it is nice to have that, and, and hopefully we can we can use that for sure. Well, I look forward to seeing you in a couple of weeks. The tickets are booked, so we'll, we'll see you in just a few weeks from now. And all the very best for the test and then the races before then as well. Cool. Thanks, mate. Thanks, David. We'll see you in a few weeks. Well, very interesting from Dixie. And of course, running five cars makes a huge difference to the workload over even four cars at Indy. So, you know, big things ahead for Ganassi. But what we saw on the following day, day two of the test, was they ran as a pack. And those five cars were very dominant. Uh, Jimmy Johnson right up there at one stage, he was leading the timesheets. So Jimmy's become very accustomed to the oval. Uh, and this is a great thing to see from a seven-time cup car champion so there's there's big things ahead for Ganassi and they were there all day TK of course shining brightly as well and Alex Palau joining the gang so it was a great performance from them I, again you can't read too much into this we don't know what they were doing whether they're doing car setup for race spec or or whatever certainly not trimmed out in qualifying mode the speed's topping out at around the 227 mark and we'd expect to see them up around 232 mile an hour uh, come qualifying so the entry speed into turn one is something like nearly 368 kilometers an hour if you work in kilometers an hour so that turn in speed is just absolutely phenomenal and it needs the utmost commitment the balance of day two really went quite quite smoothly really most cars got some good track time and everyone ran on it and of course as I said the only person that was missing was Elio Castro Neves and that was just a shame but a good call from Shank to get out of there get back to the team base and rebuild that car and leave Simon there to probably do the testing work for everybody. Once again, I had the chance to catch up at the post-event press conference for the day and got to talk to the two Ganassi drivers. And one thing that uh, I was quite interested in really was how they cope with this gap between now and then the running of the actual race or when we go into practice of the race, which is still a good, the best part of three to four weeks away. So there's, um, you know, there's quite a time frame there. For TK, he's out of the car now. For Jimmy Johnson, he's got to turn his attention to Barber. So that was the question I posed to them. David Turner from Racing World. David? Thanks Hello. very much, Dave. Um, this is for both the Ganassi drivers, actually, for TK and Jimmy. Um, for TK, firstly, this this test was such a big deal, but now you're out of the car for the best part of quite a few weeks. So how do you cope with the emotions of being back at the speedway and then to have it sort of pulled away from you for a few weeks? And then for Jimmy, you're back at Barber next week and you've got to kind of put 
IMS out of your mind. So mentally, how do you cope with that as well? Yeah, I mean, I knew this was going to happen, so it's really not not a big deal. I actually have two races in Brazil in between now and by the time we get back here. So I'm pretty busy, so it's not really a big deal. I think I feel a lot more confident now going into Tuesday and opening day just because I know what I've done for two days here will be no like no learning curve or getting used to it on the first day. So uh, really, uh, to me, it it's not a big deal. I was I was I was prepared anyway. And for me, you know, the street and road course stuff is is a separate world, and I'm, you know, it's no secret I've got a ways to go to catch up to everybody. Um, I'm thankful that we were able to test at Barber. I feel like I'm um, you know much quicker than I was there last year, and just trying to you know take smart steps forward and find pace. Barber's a very demanding racetrack um, with you know a lot of uh, penalties out there for you if if you are too aggressive. So I'm going to be smart with that. Um, you know, thinking about Barber, I haven't been, been able to train too much with my uh, with my hand situation. So uh, this next you know ten days will be important for me to make sure I get my grip strength and my uh, muscle strength kind of in my right arm uh, up to par, just so I can you know be physically ready for the race and um, sit and wait. You know, I think there's actually two road course races before uh, we get on the oval. Um, so my expectations for street and road is, you know, keep improving, try to work my way into the mid pack. And then when we get back here, I think my expectations go up quite a bit. Well, thanks very much. And all the best to all four of you for the rest of the season as well. Speaking of Barber, very positive things about Barber Motorsport Park next week. It's totally sold out on the Sunday. Totally, totally sold out. And it's a magnificent venue. I've been lucky to be there a couple of times. Really enjoy the venue. It's great with all the sculptures. And of course, what it also is, is the return of the Indy Light series and the F2000 series featuring Kiwis Hunter McElroy and Billy Fraser and Jacob Douglas. They'll all be there and it'll be great to see how they go. And in the coming weeks, we'll be catching up with all three of them when Racing World returns to Indy. At the end of the day, it was Newgarden that topped the timesheets on the second day. Uh, it was slightly unexpected because he was down the lower end of the portion for quite a while. Again, these are toe speeds as well. And if we looked early on, one of the highest non-toe speeds was actually J.R. Hildebrand in the A.J. Foyt car. And yet when you look at him in the toe speeds, he was kind of mid to back end of the field. So there's a lot to read into that yet. But what we do know is that 32 cars all ran very competitively. The speeds were there, not a big differential between all the cars, which will make uh, the lead into the race, Fast Friday, then qualifying weekend, absolutely phenomenal. As I said now, the teams move to Barber Motorsport Park for the next event, then back to IMS on the road course, and then the real month of May gets started. So it's been a great couple of days test. Fantastic that IndyCar have these events, especially at that venue. You really feel now like the month of May is coming. So as I said earlier on, great to be part of Velocity in New Zealand now uh, for the coming month of May. Really, really looking forward to uh, just sharing our content with Velocity as well. It's a great outlet for you to all get a bit of a motorsport fix. So thanks again to Zane and Mark at Velocity. And we look forward to bringing you many episodes of Racing World from Indianapolis in the coming month.